How's it going everyone? Welcome to yet another video. Today we're going to be talking about memory or RAM and exactly what happens to it from generation to generation to make it better. Now we're not going to go into it's faster by this much and it's more efficient because pretty much everyone knows that from every generation of all hardware, it gets better. We're gonna go into how and why this actually happens. How do these modules use less voltage, but somehow perform way better than the previous generation? What actually changed in them? What, did the chip change? Did they add something? That's what we're gonna find out right now. So let's get started with the baseline data we're gonna be using, and this is our SDR. This is single data rate transfer memory, and this only transfers one read or write per cycle of your computer. Now, if you wanna know a little bit more about cycles and you're a little unfamiliar with that, I have another video, go check that out first. Otherwise, let's continue. That's gonna be it for SDR. We're moving straight to DDR, and this is probably the term you're more familiar with. DDR stands for double data rate, and this actually transfers not only on the rising, but the falling edge of a clock cycle. So before in the SDR where you were only getting one read or write per cycle, now you're doubling that to two reads or writes per cycle. Now the great advantage of this is you can actually double the amount of data transferred or basically the speed of your RAM without actually changing the frequency at all. So the frequency could stay exactly the same from SDR to DDR and you'd get twice the performance just because now you're transferring on both the rising and falling of the clock cycle. DDR also runs at a slightly lower voltage. SDR from 3.3 volts down to 2.5 volts on DDR due to just some changes on the interface arrangements of the chip. Now one of the biggest things that DDR actually introduced is something called a prefetch. This tells us how many words of data the memory can fetch at a time. Now a word is just a term used for 32 bits of data. With single data rate memory, only one word of data was ever fetched from the memory and sent to the CPU. With DDR though, double data rate memory, prefetching allowed multiple words to be fetched per cycle and would prepare the data to all be sent before the next cycle came. All right, let's talk about DDR2 now. With another voltage drop down to 1.8 volts, it uses even less power and this is mainly due to two things. For one, they actually changed the way the manufacturing process works to have smaller dies. And the smaller you can make any component of a computer, the less power it's gonna be required to actually operate it. The second main reason for the lower voltage is movement of a resistor. This resistor was originally on the motherboard, but it was actually moved to the RAM itself on the RAM stick. And this resistor is basically in charge of reducing noise from signals inside the chip. With having it on the actual board, in which they call on die termination, this actually helped reduce a lot of power and as well as cost when actually manufacturing these. Fun little fact here, when DDR2 was actually released, it was slower than the original DDR. But eventually, about a year later, DDR2 had caught up to the speeds of DDR and actually surpassed them now because DDR was already at its limits. And lastly, the prefetch of DDR2 was again doubled. So from DDR of two, it was actually moved to four. So now it could prefetch four words instead of the two words from DDR. All right, now let's talk about some DDR3. And as we mentioned before briefly, DDR3's prefetch now went from four from DDR2 doubling to eight words per cycle in DDR3, which gave it way faster speeds it was able to work at. The voltage again was also dropped to 1.5 volts. So not a huge change from the 1.8 volts we saw in DDR2. And this was mainly due to the resistors that we talked about earlier actually changing again. So with more efficient parts, they're actually able to move these 22 ohm resistors down to 15 ohm resistors on DDR3. All right, now we've made it all the way to DDR4 memory. And DDR4 actually has the biggest change we've seen thus far from the original SDR being invented to DDR4 now with the invention of bank groups. So with bank groups, the way that it does its prefetching is a little different. So instead of once again doubling the prefetch size from eight words to 16, like they have done in every generation thus far, that would cause a huge increase in latency for the memory, and this would cost more money and it would just make the card physically bigger, which they didn't want to have to do. So instead, they invented something called bank groups. And I guess I shouldn't really say invented because this actually was technology that already existed in GDDR5 memory from graphics cards. Now, if you want me to go into the differences between graphics memory and system memory, I can do that in another video. Just leave a comment below and leave this video a like rating. Now, back to talking about bank groups. What do bank groups do and how do they work? So instead of having a giant 16 word prefetch buffer, they split this into two different groups of eight word prefetch buffers that act completely independent of each other. So each group has their own multiplexer which takes 
all eight of the words of data and combines it into one line of code. Then those two lines are combined with their own multiplexer to eventually give your output of one code for all the groups that you have banked. This is then sent to your processor to actually use and process the data. Thanks for watching my video, guys. If you like more videos like this, please consider subscribing. I have a ton of other explained videos. And if you don't see one that you like, leave a comment below in the comment section because I actually do take a lot of suggestions from my comments to make my future videos. I hope you learned something today and I hope you have a good day. See you guys in the next video shortly.